As you remember, in the previous session, we did Surah Al-Falaq, and Surah Al-Nas is the second pair, and we are going to do, cover some uh, grammar in the second session, so, and we will learn six new words, which have been used in the Quran almost uh, 587 times. So, mashallah, our chart is growing. We are hitting almost close to 30,000 Quranic quick words. Quick preview or quick review of the last surah. So we learned some words, uh, vocabulary is al-falak. Al-falak means the daybreak. We talked about shar, shar means the evil. Ma, ma has many meanings. Uh, for example, it can be used for that which, what not. Uh, and sometimes we use it for what, sometimes we use it for negative, like not. And sometimes we say that which. Khalaka, as you know, this is a past tense. And that means he created. Ghasik is darkness. Wakab, when the darkness becomes intense, when something becomes intense. Annafasati, those who blow, like me, meaning magic. Um, Al Okad, Okad is the knots. You know how you tie the knots in the in, in a rope. That is what Hasad, uh, Okad is. The next word is Hasid. And we talked about it. The hasid is the envier or the person who is jealous. Okay. All right. So before I continue with Surah Nas, let's do a quick uh, recall of our Surah, Surah Al-Falaq. What did we learn about? That we said that uh, we seek protection in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the Lord of the daybreak. Then we also seek protection from the wasik, the darkness or the evil of the darkness. And what was the next one? And uh, the shar of the nafasati, the people who cast evil spell or, um, you know, do the magic. Third was the, the from the shar of a jealous person. You guys all remember that? Uh, is the the last surah of the Quran, or at least in, in the when they compile the Quran, this is the last surah of the Quran. Um, and it teaches us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from shaitan. And if you also remember the background that why these two surahs were revealed, because some uh, evil person was, uh, did some black magic or magic on Prophet Rasulullah and he got sick. And as a remedy for from that uh, evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed these two surahs. Okay. So we ask protection from shaitan. Now, even if you have knowledge, even if you know the complete Quran, still you have to continuously fight the whispering of shaitan till death. What did that mean? That means that I can be a scholar, I can be a very knowledgeable person, but that by default does not give me protection from shaitan. We still have to seek the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these whisperings of the shaitan will continue till the day we die. And at the time of death, if you study the hadith and uh, some of the stories of the companion, that is the most crucial time when the shaitan could uh, destroy your all, all your life's worth of deeds if he is successful in driving you away from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of death. So we always seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he give us a good ending and he allows us to recite the kalima inshallah. So when we go from this dunya, we are going in our the best way possible. Say ameen. And those who strive to keep you away from evil, right? Uh, wouldn't you like to be such friends of others? So, uh, oh, sorry. I think um, I missed one slide. Let me just go back. Did I? Okay. So the next slide is, you cannot hit shaitan, you cannot kill him, you can't even see him, and you can't convince him either. So he stays with you right to the end. But so do the angels by your side and your friends. So the one who inspired you to do good, and those who strive you to keep you away from evil. So in other words, would you, would you be like to be a, such a friend to others where you are helping them staying away from shaitan or 
connecting with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Now, always remember that hadith that I think I once quoted, uh, nearest to the meaning that uh, we need to have friends who, when you look at them, they remind you of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, inshallah, we we will look at that hadith in detail some other time. But the the moral of the hadith is that we should surround ourselves with good company. Okay. Again. We, you cannot hate shaitan, you cannot kill him, and you cannot even see him, and you cannot convince him either. And he's not stupid, meaning shaitan is very smart. In fact, he is the very experience from the time of Adam alayhi salam. He has misled perhaps billions of people. And even today, we are all victim of his uh, mis, uh, you know, mischiefs. So we need to be very, very careful when it comes to shaitan. We should not take him lightly. So the only complete and perfect solution is to take refuge in Allah through his dhikr. Yeah. So when we say, uh, that's why whenever we read Quran, what do we say? We say, A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. So the surah starts, A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. So say, I seek refuge in the rub of mankind. Now in Surah Al-Falaq, what did we say? That I say, I seek refuge in the rub of the daybreak. Remember that? So keep these two surahs side by side because these surahs can be called as sisters surahs because they are one after the other and they have protection from all kind of evil. So Kul Auz bi Rabbil Falak was the Surah Al Falak, and Kul Auz bi Rabbin Nas is the Surah Al Nas. So let's say the let's see that the translation. So the meaning of Kul is say. Now is that a command? Is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanding Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say that? Yes. Good. So this and then Auzu. Auzu is. I seek refuge. I seek refuge. Now, Mashallah, you have knowledge. Can you see that Auzu is Fele Modare? Yeah? Yes. Nauzu will be what? We, we refuse. We, 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 we seek refuge. refuge. We seek refuge. Yeah. Auzu, I, I seek refuge. refuge. I refuge. Okay. So now you can put the two and two together. Auzu is Fele Modare. And this is the, the Mutakallim one, the sing, singular one. Yeah? Yeah. If the we have to first say, person. if we have to say, uh, in the past, past tense, how we will say? Well, uh, okay. Let's not go there for right now, <laughs> but I just wanted you to pay attention to the part that okay, Auzu okay. is a fellow Mudari. Okay. Auzu Billahi. I seek refuge in Allah. Right? And the letter Ba is a preposition that means in, like Rabbi in the Lord of. So Rabbi is the Lord that who takes care of every cell and every atom in our existence at every moment. Insan is a man. The meaning of insan is man. When we say nas, we mean people. What is the meaning of nas? People. People. So who are we seeking the refuge of? Allah, who is the rub of all mankind. mankind. Yes. Okay. So now I'll try to visualize this, that... We, uh, we have continuous attacks by shaitan, and then we say auzu. The rub of 7 billion people, now uh, I believe is we're still 6 billion. Are we still 6 billion or 7? Are we hitting close to 7? Anybody? What so, is that? Uh, we are, are we, we are still above 6 seven billion in people in Allah, the world? Allah, or are we Allah, Allah knows the best. Allah knows best. So 6 billion to be, to be more accurate. So six point. Let's uh, be uh, precise. Six point five. Point five. So we are rounding up to seven, but it, inshallah, we, one one day there will be seven billion people. So let's focus on that. The rub of these six point five billion people, and we are seeking the refuge of Him, and He is the one who causes the rain to fall, brings forth the crops, maintains the sun and the earth in their respective orbits alter the season and all the other things for our survival. So when we are seeking refuge in Allah, we need to bring his greatness in our mind so that we feel extremely secure that we are seeking refuge in an entity 
who is capable of everything. So when the grandeur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in our mind, then the sense of security will be also grandeur. Right? So inshallah, visualize that, that I am seeking the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the best of the best provider of security. Right? And why? Because he is basically take, they're taking care of everything what we, we live for. So feel his greatness while reciting it. When you do that, then the sense of security will be strong. The sense of security will give you a lot of peace of mind. Say, recite and convey with this wisdom and kindness the same way that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. Yeah? So let's continue. Malikin Nas. Malikin Nas. The king, or Malikin Nas, sorry. Malikin Nas, the king of mankind. Ilahin Nas, the ilah of mankind. What is the meaning of this? This Malik and Malik, uh, Malak and Malik. There are three different variations of the same root letters. Mim, Lam, and Kaf. When you say Malik, that means king. When you say Malak, that means an angel, Malaika. Yeah? And when you say Malik, that it means the owner. This Malik and Malik can both be applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the king and Malik of everything at the same time. So he, we are seeking the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the Lord of the people. And then he's also the king of the mankind. And Ilah in Nas, Ilah is, uh, let's go back. Ilah is also the worthy of worship, the entity who is worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. worship. And, yeah. and in our case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only entity or deity who is worthy of worship and there is nobody else we associate with him. Yeah? So, ilaha is singular. Aliha meaning plural. False gods or gods. The, the translation of aliha will be alihatun mean gods. So, we say the true king of 6.5 billion people, he owns everything, including their life and death. If I don't obey his laws, then do I really accept him as a king? So the question to ourselves is, a self-pondering, a soul-searching question is that in the today's uh, day and age, if I do not obey his laws, then do I really accept him as, a, as the king? So this is something to ponder on your own time and personally ask yourself how loyal or how obedient I am to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you get that answer, uh, we can we always have the room to adjust and mend ourselves. The seek the you know we can seek toba, we can repent, we can regret, and we can always turn to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and increase our, our obedience and inshallah get close to Him. Yeah, we all intend to do that inshallah. 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 Somebody muted. He is the one uh, worthy to be worshipped. People turn to him in times of despair, even though some of them deny his existence in good time. Meaning even the non-believers at the time of extreme dis despair, they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They may turn away right after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes them away from that problem. But even the mushrikeen, when they used to get in trouble, um, they used to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon uh, alone. Okay, so what do we do? We Our four-step plan is, the very, what is the very first step? That when we want to uh, achieve something, that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, make my mind clear to believe and worship you alone. Seek refuge in Allah from shaitan and from my own desires. Okay, so you agree to that? Now, what yes. we do, the very first thing is we make dua. What's the dua? That we need to worship him alone. And what is that one dua we should recite after every first salah? Allahumma aini ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husna ibadati. Right? So, inshallah, we should make this dua very frequently. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised the companions to do it after every first salah. 
So we need to even to to help uh, to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We need His help, and in order to have our clear uh, and certain belief in Him, we also need help from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay. Now this keyword here that I need the seek the refuge in Allah from the Shaitan, and the most important is from my own desires. Okay. What is my own desires means? That means my own nafs. Yes. Yes. So remember, one time I was uh, asking you that in when Shaitan disobeyed Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who did he blame, or who could he blame? Because normally when we do something wrong, we blame it on the Shaitan, as you know, the very first thing we say, "Oh, Shaitan made me do it," right? But Shaitan, who made Shaitan do what he did uh, when he disobeyed Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? That was his own no. nafs. That was his own self, right? Because our nafs, the the thing we call our ego, the me, you know, the thing which is like me, that me or this soul or the self inside, it has a power of its own of convincing. So then, according to the Quran, following the one's own desire is to make it an ilah. What is ilah? Worthy of worship. Worship. Meaning, we make our own desire so strong. That they can drive us to uh, disobey the orders of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and then when we become uh, habitual of that, that means we are making, we are kind of worshiping our own self up, uh, above the orders of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So then, how, I need to ask myself, evaluate. The second part was, once I make du'a to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then I evaluate myself that how many times did I succumb to the whisperings of the Shaitan. Does that happen to us all the time? Yes. yes. So, according to the Quran, following Shaitan is like worshiping him. Also, the verse number twenty-three, the surah number twenty-three, verse number sixty. So, why do I listen to him? Is it because of my bad environment, or or I'm do my iman is so weak that I fall prey to him uh, every now and then? So, we need to ask these evaluating questions to ourselves and try to fix it. Okay. So min sharil waswas al khannas. Then we at after we seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, after telling the qualities of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He is the Rabb of the Nas and He is the King of the Nas, the King of the people, Malikin Nas wa Ilahin Nas, and He is the Lord of all the people. Then we seek protection from the evil of the whisperer and the one who withdraws after whispering. Okay, so who are we talking about here? Who whispers in our ears or in our heart? Shait, in our shaitan, mind? shaitan, shaitan. And what does he do? He whispers and then he goes away, and then he comes back and then whispers something again and then goes away. Okay, so imagine this uh, quality of his that how he is he's a smooth operator. How he works on us. He he plants an idea first. And then he slowly convinces us about that idea. Okay, so what do we do? We seek protection from him through Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Okay, so shar, as we talked about, meaning evil. Shar also means suffering, direct or cause of evil, if, even if it happens to be good. Now, sometimes shar could appear as a good thing, but it is not a good thing. Okay. So, and then he puts something secretly in the heart. Who does that? Shaitan does that. Shaitan. Okay. And then that is what we call a waswasa. What is a waswasa? A doubtful feeling or a doubtful idea in your in your mind, or he plants a plants a suspicion in your mind, right? Waswasa, zalzala. Zalzala is I don't know why they put zalzala here, but it's it's on the same pattern. That's why they put it. Zalzala means earthquake. These are these are the four root letter word. They are not three. How many letters you see there? Four. four. So pronunciation shows the repetition. Okay. So that means, and Khanas is the one who withdraws. So he comes and he goes away. He comes, whispers, and run away. Then comes back again, and he continues that, but he never gives up till we die. You get that? So we need to understand the functioning of the shaitan. We need to understand his plot. We need to understand how he works on us. 
Okay, so waswas, so shaitan is always in one of the two states. Waswas, when he makes you forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you, when you forget about, forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then when you get busy with other life stuff, that is waswas. Or khannas, when you remember Allah, he comes and he tried to make you, like for example in salah. Let's, let's take a look at the next slide, maybe he will explain to us. So when you're in the salah, what happens to you? Who are you trying to remember? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah And what happens during salah? He, 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 he distracts us. He my, makes my, us my, remember my, my. every possible thing uh, we for, we're trying to forget in salah, right? We get to know everything. We remember every little final uh, small detail during salah, right? So that's what the, the action of khannas is. Now look how things work. The first step is he plants a seed. Let's call it a waswasa. And then based on that idea he planted in your mind, it starts to become an intention. You say, okay, I'm going to do it. Right? Then when you have an intention, eventually it will become an action. Do you guys see the, 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 uh, the plan here? That how does it work? It starts with a waswasa. What's what I mean? An idea, a suspicion in the mind, a, a planting of a seed of an evil idea, or give you some hint of you should, oh, you should do this, right? And then that idea will turn eventually in the, in become your in, intention, and then eventually you will start to act on it. You guys see that? So repetition leads to habit, and habits leads to destiny. And then such a person becomes human shaitan too. Meaning if you get addicted to an evil deed and you do it again and again, you basically, shaitan doesn't have to work on you anymore. He can leave you alone because you are now set. You, he, he can forget about you and maybe start working on a, a different candidate. Yeah? Okay. So, so what, do, what is the message from this? Message is that we cannot kill him. We cannot hit him. We cannot get rid of him. He's always there to, to put the whispers in our heart. He's always there to make us forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's always there to, you know, when we are trying to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he comes and make hurdles in that process or take our heart, create the division in our heart and mind so that we cannot completely focus and connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So isn't he our worst enemy? Yes. Brother Khaled? Yes, yes. So, so if we see him as a worse enemy, then what is our, what is our problem that, that we do not uh, react towards him like an enemy? Yeah, if we have an enemy in the world, and if we know that that's our worst enemy, we are the harshest toward that person, or we have a lot of resentment or hatred toward that person. But when it comes to shaitan, we directly or indirectly be friends with him. We do not have the same a feeling of hostility towards him, right? Even though he's the one who's causing us all the pain, right? So we should be feeling that pain of the result as you say it, as if it's describing someone who hurts you. Meaning we should be very, very angry with shaitan that he is trying his best to destroy us. Yeah, he is our worst enemy. And shaitan and the two angels, but we also remember that we also have the two angels that are always with us who are protecting us. So we are not alone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us some companions to, to safeguard ourselves. And on top of that, we have the uh, Allah's protection. So know the importance and greatness of Allah's zikr. Remember, because he keeps a shaitan away from us. Agree? Allazi yuwasfi sufi sudurin nas. Yes. So where does he whispers? It, it, um, into our chest. Into our chest. Because he is the one who whispers into the chest of the mankind. Why the chest? Sudur Heart. is chest. So the one who, Allazi, the meaning of Allazi is the one who yuwasfi su whispers. Waswas meaning one who whispers. So the yuwasfi su is shaitan. And the person who does the whispering is known as Viswas. His name is Viswas. Okay. Sadar is chest. Sudur is the plural of chests. Chest is singular. Sadar. Sudur is the plural of chest. So how does it work? Mentioned in the Quran almost 
Uh, and Nas is mentioned 300 times once on each pair of pages. So that means it's, it's been repeated quite a bit. So Shaitan tries to whisper in the chest. Chest is the entry region for the heart. Agree? Shaitan tries to whisper in the chest. Chest is the entry region for the heart. In, if the heart is alive and sound with the zikr of Allah, then the whispering attacks of Shaitan fail and he withdraws. Agree? Okay, let's see what I do. So we go, and what is the Quran? Quran is the Shifa, Shifaul Lima Fi Sudur. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in the Quran that Quran is the Shifa of the hearts, Shifa for the sicknesses of the heart, cures the diseases of ignorance, doubts, hypo hypocrisy, and evil desires. Yeah. Okay. And then we also seek protection from who else? Minal jinnati one nas. Where do we, what, what other uh, protection we seek? We need the protection from the jinn and the people who are evil. Can, is shaitan alone is evil or people can be evil too? People can be evil. Yes. So, so the one shaitan is always there or the jinn is jinn is also we we know the shaitan is from the, the category of jinns so it's one is shot. always there with each one of us don't have to look for haunted houses so we do, we, we know that shaitan is always there with us right and uh, rasulullah sallallahu said that we have each one of us has an appointed shaitan right so min al jinna jinna is al jinna or is from al jinn jinn is min the jinn the last word of the Quran alerting us to keep good company. What does that mean? That if we are seeking protection from all these things, what is the opposite of all that? What is the opposite? The opposite will be to seek the seek. company of good people. Good people, good friends, you know, and uh, zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, keeping yourself surrounded by nice people so that they remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They remind you of your do's and don'ts. Because what is the best quality of the Ummat Muhammadiyah? Yeah, that they invite you towards good and forbid you from evil. Right? Okay. So the last part of the Quran, why is the last part of the Quran? Because this is the last surah and this is the last verse. Uh, so the last word of the Quran is that e is to be protected from the protect yourself from the evil people, alerting us to keep good company. Okay, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told that every one of us has a shaitan, jinn, always with him or her. He continuously try to mislead us at every possible opportunity. How many people can second that? So shaitan, yeah, so shaitan, uh, uh, shaitan uh, from humans, we also have uh, people who act like shaitan or they do the same thing, they do whispers in your ears and they, they, they who work for shaitan directly or indirectly, they seduce us away from, the, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there are a lot of uh, bad environment around us which can take us away from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take us into some areas which are not very good for us and men and women both around us uh, through their dresses, talk and action, they can all work as the agents of shaitan. I'm sure we are all familiar with this. I really don't have to go in detail about this, but we need to be very, very aware of our surrounding. Now, remember that hadith of Rasulullah that keeping a good company, that he gave an example to explain this, that Let's say your friend is an ironsmith. You know what an ironsmith is, right? Yeah, if, Lohar. If, Lohar. If you go visit his workplace, or if you go visit him... Blacksmith. Oh, blacksmith. So he will be working with fire. He will be working with, the, you know, the place will be stinky. Uh, there will be a lot of smoke. And if you go sit down there, the chances are some uh, fire particles can land on your clothes and it can destroy your clothes. And when you leave that place, you will be smelling like smoke, right? Versus a person who is selling perfumes. You have another friend who sells perfume. 
Now, what will happen if you visit his workplace? Even if you don't buy the perfume, when you leave that place, you will be smelling good. Agree? Yes. Have you heard that, Hadith? Have you heard that yes. example? Yes. So that, that is an example of keeping a good company. That if we keep good company, our person, a person, our friend, when we look at him, he reminds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we sit with them, we learn more things about our deen. And when we leave them, at least we are more uh, attracted to our uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the other way around. Okay. So isn't that word full of such people? Do you see how important this surah is for our safety? So are we making sure that we are uh, we are trying to uh, bring these surahs? Uh, what is the sunnah of uh, these surahs? Can somebody explain to me? We, yes. we talked about it last time. Yeah, so after every salah, we read it at least one time. One time. And after fajr and uh, maghrib salah, three times. Three times. And also at bedtime. And also at bedtime. Okay, so interacting with this Surah Nas, how can we bring this into our life that we have our four step process? So what do we do? First of all, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. We say we should recite Surah and Nas or say A'udhu Billahi very often. So many times you, you have the whispers of shaitan and if you realize that, oh, it is a whisper. So what do we say? A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. What is another thing we say? La hawla illa aquwata illa billah. Then we evaluate how many times did we fall into shaitan's trap? Why do we have bad friends around us? Do we have a uh, we have a lot of um, evil environment around us, or are we surrounding ourselves with uh, you know areas where we can really or easily fall into the the trap of shaitan? Or do we have lack of knowledge? Now, lack of knowledge means if you know your deen, if you know the do's and uh, don'ts, if you know the right and wrong, the halal and haram, then the chances are you will try to protect yourself from shaitan or his whispers. If you do not know your deen very well, the chances are it's easy for you to fall into the traps of shaitan. Agree to that? Yeah. Okay. Then the third step is after we evaluate, we plan. We plan to avoid we make group plan to a family and a society level to avoid the attacks of shaitan. And then we try to implement those plans. And what is one of the ways to do that plan? That we propagate. So let people know the dangers, the fatal strokes and entry points of shaitan. Right? So in this session, what are we trying to do? We are basically trying to educate ourselves about the dangers of shaitan and how he operates and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is himself guiding us to seek protection from his, uh, you know, his, uh, his plots. So Alhamdulillah, this is the uh, end of the surah. And the, some of the vocabulary we got out of that is Malik. What is Malik? King. King. Or Malak? Order. What is Malak? Malak. Uh, ba, ba, ang Ma Malaika. Angel. Angels. And Malik is owner. 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 Uh, Maliki Yomiddin. Yeah, remember Surah Al Fatiha? Yeah, owner of Maliki Yomiddin. He is the master or the owner of the day of judgment. Ilaha or Ilah is worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. worship. Al Waswas, the, the whisperer. whisperer, the person who whispers. It could be Shaitan, it could be a bad friend, it could be a bad company, right? Al Khannas, the one who withdraws after whispering. Yeah? Yeah. Sudur is chest, chest. meaning where our heart is in our chest. So, Sudur is the plural of Sadr. Can we say that who repeats the whisper, whispers? What does that mean? I mean, the one who repeats whisper, whispering in your ears, Khannas. That is Khannas. You know, like, you know, say, uh, uh, what did that mean? Meaning a person, you know, when sometimes you are, uh, like give you an example. Uh, for example, uh, at work, my colleague can come to me and say, hey, hey did you know that uh, such and such person got a promotion? And then I say, oh yeah, good for him. 
then say, oh, you know what? You deserve a promotion. How come you never got a promotion? So what did he do now? He actually planted a seed of unhappiness in my mind. Yes. So if I'm not a very smart person, I may fall into that. And then that thing will start to uh, bother me from, from now on. And I'm not going to be feel the same at work. And anytime I'm going to bump into my manager, I will have this little bit of grudge against him that how come he didn't promote me and he promoted X, Y, Z when I was the most deserving. So that idea, that whispering of somebody, whether shaitan or a person, is called the idea of khannas. Now he has put, planted that doubt in my head. Got it? Okay. So here is the whole surah. Kul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharril waswasil khannas, alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas, min al-jinnati wal-nas.